the Nigerian federal government and state governments may have ignored very important lessons from Fulani elders, who are the best local experts in cattle rearing and management. As a businessman and one with a passion for economics, I have always believed that price could be a signal of the best economic policy choices. In my secondary school, some of my classmates called me Baba Ekons. That's according to a man called Baba Ekons. For the fun of it, I took the O-level WAHEC examination in economics as an external student in my junior class, and I was glad with the result. I had A1 when I attended the University of Buckingham in United Kingdom for my master's degree. I was grateful to God that I obtained distinctions in international economics and international finance to be sure that the secondary school performance was not a fluke. Sounds boastful and immodest, but it has become necessary in the Nigerian heavily self-opinionated atmosphere to make such introduction on this emotive subject matter. After all, I am just another politician, one of those expected not to know anything. Back to the real question. What are the things that Nigerian elders do that has kept the beef price, which is the meat, in Nigeria, one of the lowest in the world, precisely $4.85 per kilogram, compared to higher prices obtained in countries where most Western oriented commentators want us to switch our livestock production pattern to, such as the United States, where the price of beef is five times the Nigerian cost, a whooping $24.18 dollar per kilogram netherland 24.19 dollar in the netherland dollar per kilogram israel 21.49 per kilogram i reproduce below a global index of beef prices what will be the consequences when we change the method of raising cattle pretty simple stuff the first is that he takes his cattle to the grass he does not pay for the price of bringing the grass to his cattle. The second is almost similar. He takes his cattle to water and he does not bring water to his cattle through a complex irrigation system that needs to be paid for in ad currency and needs to be maintained by experts from overseas. The third and most important most times is the pharmacist, nurse and doctor of his cattle through a deep understanding of plants in the forest passed to him by his ancestors from generation to generation now low to most and now lost to most sedentary people this may not be an exactly preferred veterinary medical practice but it helps him keep his cost low he is also the social worker and the security personnel to his cattle like david in the bible that would put his life at risk to save one of his sheep fighting physically with bare hands against the lion most of us today ridicule that commitment to a work culture that has endured for generations we say in derision that some people prefer cows to life the truth of the matter is that for any enterprise to succeed and endure there must be passion even before money perhaps that is why the elder is reluctant to embrace a system that would put his cattle in the hands of civil servants that have been designed to manage the national livestock trans transformation plan. I am not a full animal, but I grew up in New Bazaar, Niger State, Niger State rather and in Kwara, surrounded by Fulani settlements. I did not grow up with the consciousness of seeing Fulanis as oppressors killing and seeking to grab anyone's land as is now the narrative because of the almost abject poverty of most of them i know why growing up as a matter of fact we had a lot of them as our elves we respected them and learned a lot from their wisdom and simplicity we all agree that the open grazing must go for its sundry limitations even though sometimes exaggerated through a general stereotyping that confuses the criminal activities of some foreign nomads who have infiltrated our forest with the generally peaceful and lawful activities of local elders that have done their businesses peacefully for ages. Some of these well adumbrated scenes of open grazing include destruction of farmlands, violence against sedentary farmers, and sometimes resulting in death, trespass on private properties, land grabbing, 
ambition of the Fulani ethnic group even though unsubstantiated. My economic instinct tells me that we may have ignored very important lessons from the best local expert in cattle rearing and management. Well, the Fulani either in our emotionally driven path to create a new livestock management system. Agroeconomic policies should not be a function of sentiments and politics, but sound economics. Ranching, which some governors favor, will deliver beef to the market at a higher cost than that of U.S. or United States, if finally adopted, because the landing cost of equipment and services will make the price of beef completely unreachable for most households. The last time I checked, the cost of fairly used 18,000 acres ranch in Argentina was a whooping sum of $10 million, which is 5 billion naira as Nigerian money. Hundreds of such ranches would be needed, plus landing costs cost of corruption, cost of delayed delivery, ports, congestion, etc, etc. I understand that some people don't mind higher cost of beef as long as we deal with the Fulanese. I discussed this with a couple who replied me in Yoruba and ni to rikwe ajeron kakwe malu ni boda. Meaning literally, we won't pass the respect normally reserved for humans to a cow on account of our desire to eat beef. That may be true and may be in synchronization with and which with prevailing sentiments, but an enduring national agricultural policy cannot be determined by base sentiments but on the numbers. I am persuaded a policy that confines the elders to a grazing reserve where they will still be in control of their cattle but will not be in a position to trespass on other people's land will be superior choice to a plan that hopes to put experienced pastoralists under the management of civil servants who lack any experience in cattle breeding and who are advised by imported specialists with zero knowledge of the local environment. The policy of developing grazing reserve must, however, not be imposed on any state that does not want it. After all, land use charge under the Nigerian constitution is under the jurisdiction of state government. Those who want to breed their cattle at five times present cost have, have the fundamental human right to choose that. And also choose who want to breed their cattle at low cost also have right to do so. That is what true federalism means. A word of caution for federal government officials. No matter how correct their position are, they must learn the art of communication. They must not give the impression that the Fulani elders are especially favored people by them or favored by some elites and unwillingness setting the Fulani up as an endangered ethnic group. Both and both Eda and farmers are Nigerians, and our ability to improve on the local experiences of these two strata in the agricultural sector, modernizing their experience, improving on their techniques, and not completely abolishing them will be direction to go for suitability and sustainability peace and security. I know this option would be controversial. Anyone with a better argument should bring it up and let's debate this subject. Quote, my economic instinct tells me that we may have ignored very important lessons from the best local experts in cattle rearing and management. The Fulani Eda in our emotionally driven path to create a new livestock management system. Agroeconomic policies should not be a function of sentiments and politics but, but sound economics. Ranching which some governors favor will deliver beef to the market at higher cost than that of the US if finally adopted because the landing cost of equipment and services will make the price of beef completely unreachable for most households. Hmm. Hope you have listened to the article. This is one observation. But let me quickly go through the reaction of so many people. Maybe I'll be, I'm going through one or two. Well, you guys should study the respected elder statesman scientific cost effective cattle rearing economics with security and safety consciousness of individual federating unit line by line. He equally cautioned the central government of nepotism and autocracy. This is a classical economics, consultant C test. Free of charge, please let's reason and see beyond the provocation in our unjustifiable union. God bless you, Baba Edwin, though you are not a saint either. Hmm. Why bring it David or David, sorry, into the matter where he only killed a lion and a bear to defend? Well, I won't be able to read much of this, but what I would say is that 
federal government shouldn't build nepotism and sentiment into cattle rearing because it's a private business whoever wants to uh, ranch should go for ranching and whoever wants to go for open grazing should go for open grazing judgment day is coming well, I would like you to share your comments and those that have not been aware, you should share this news so that others can be aware. Thanks for listening and God bless.